Hello, and welcome to episode 15 of Project Slave 1. Progress on this build is seldom as quick as I'd like, and I know there are plenty of you out there eager to get your hands on a set of files for my Slave 1. This phase of the build does take time, but my goal is to produce a reliable set of files that will print well and allow us to have the best model of Slave 1 available today. I don't know how much longer it'll take, but by subscribing to my channel and clicking on the bell icon for notifications, you'll be the first to know when the files are for sale. This is the way. I'm now at the test printing stage, and while it's going well, prints take time to run, and if there are errors or the design needs to be improved, changes have to be made, and the print run again. This process isn't a problem for just a few parts, but Slave 1's a very complex model, and having over 130 parts does mean this takes time. A lot of time. I've been asked several times, will I be able to print Slave 1 on a certain printer? Well, here's what you need to know. The largest part is one of the fuselage side units. Here's the dimensions. If your printer can't print a part this size, then you have some options. Rescaling the files to print a smaller model is possible, but you'll have to get creative with some of the hardware used in the build. Some slicer software allows you to cut up the STL files into smaller manageable chunks for printing. This is another option. Of course, you could always buy a bigger printer, I designed everything to be printable on the Anycubic M3 Max, and so far, as you'll see, it's been exceptional, but more on that later. The main hull parts are designed to be printable on either a resin printer or an FDM printer. I know there are some of you that want to print a larger Slave 1. Well, this should help you do that. The front hull section just fits on my Ultimaker 2 Plus. The other hull parts don't. But as an example, you can see this part is straightforward to print on an FDM printer. Given the large size of the main hull parts and their weight during printing, when it comes to resin printing, setting them directly on the build plate is the most reliable method. As we saw in the previous video, these large parts are challenging to print. What doesn't help is the interior detail, which is inevitably compromised by support structure for printing. This hull section is printed directly onto the build plate, and needs a lot of support for the internal detail. I could have stripped out a lot more of the interior, but there comes a point when there are just too many parts to align when it comes to assembly of the model. All of the resin prints you'll see in this video were printed with a 20 micron layer height using the standard Anycubic basic resin, so there's nothing fancy going on here. And here are two of the main hull sections for the left hand side of the hull. As you can see there's a lot of internal supports here, but they're easy to remove, so it's not a major issue. The feet of the supports clash with the part, but again, not difficult to remove, and just file down. It looks like they align well, which is crucial when printing such large geometric parts. Let's remove the supports, and see exactly what we've got. As expected, they break out really easily, just a bit fiddly in places. Pliers and picks are used to get the smaller supports out of the finer detailed areas. Where the internal surfaces are facing flat to the build plate, the print quality isn't good, but this is to be expected. It's inevitable with a part like this that compromises have to be made. These areas will be fairly well hidden, and we'll just need some extra TLC when it comes to cleaning up the print. Most of the support feet can be broken out by hand, but to remove them fully, I'll use another method for that. I've put a rasp bit in my Dremel, and will use this to carefully cut away the feet to the supports. This works really well, but makes a terrible mess. Seeing where to cut becomes challenging, unless you use the force. The edges can then be trimmed closer to the surface, with a selection of files. The tail sections were printed in exactly the same way, directly onto the print bed with lots of supports. Both of these parts were printed at the same time. Then it was onto the front section of the hull. Again, this was printed directly onto the print bed, the interior needing a lot of support material. The inner shoulder area didn't come out well, and was going to be impossible to clean up to my satisfaction. I also had an issue with distortion, where the hull joins the floor. This means a lot of post-processing, 
but that's all part of the game with printing big resin parts. I decided to reprint the part in a different orientation and try and improve the quality of the interior. And it worked, great detail and minimal cleaning up of the interior. But the exterior? Not so good. This was a disaster. I'd added a lot of support, but it was just asking too much. I had to come up with a plan C. I decided to print the detailed inner arches separately from the front hull. This would mean that neither part should be compromised. The inserts easily printed flat on the build plate. The front hull section could now be printed and with a bit of fettling the inner arch inserted. Ok, it was going to need some filling, but it was worth it. A great result. I'd also printed the front skirt and this was just pinned into place. Talking of pins, I've created a file for the locating pins which are used to attach the main sections together. Here they're printed in ABS, but you could print them in resin. And here's the main hull sections, for the left hand side of Slave 1. I've inserted the locating pins so the parts line up really well. The interiors have had a fair bit of cleaning up, but I still have work to do. There's always a degree of distortion with printing, and it shows up badly on geometric parts. You can get away with a lot on organic forms such as creatures and figures, but it's a lot more difficult with a large subject like Slave 1. After some careful aligning and a lot of superglue, here's the left hand side of the hull, assembled. The parts were aligned and glued on a flat table to ensure everything was as square as possible. Of course, I did the right hand side at the same time and fitted the locating pins to join the two halves together. At this stage, I'm not bothered about the exterior. Cleaning that up will come later. With the two halves of the hull fitting together, you can appreciate the interior space much better. There's still tweaking to do so the halves align perfectly, but it's looking really good. The rear skirt's printed separately and will be added when the two halves are finally bonded together. There's a separate boarding ramp insert to display Slave 1 in flight and a tail ramp for the in flight or landed positions. One of the great things about having a large build plate is being able to fit a lot of parts on for one print job. This makes printing the smaller parts so much quicker. Here the main door, stairs, ladder, engine and hull details are all being prepared to be printed simultaneously. After a few more days printing, this is where I'm at. Lots of parts for cleaning up. Some still need the supports removing, some just a light rub down, others need filling but the quality is great. I've even got a great result on Boba's framed wall art. The largest parts to print after the hull sections are the wings. These will just fit onto an Anycubic 6K. I wouldn't recommend trying to cut them into smaller parts as rejoining them would be difficult. The 15mm wing spar goes through both wings and needs to line up with all the moving parts. It might work if you are enlarging to print a bigger Slave 1, but that's your call. I'm also printing the underside of the spine at the same time. This came out perfectly, with no distortion, but let's look at the wing print. The support easily breaks away by hand, without the need for cutters, as I haven't post cured the print. Using a pick I can remove the fine supports from the surface details. It's a great print, but I do have a distortion issue which I do need to resolve. Filing and filling should level this area out. It's annoying, but just a small area on an otherwise great print. I have the same issue on the other side, which as you can see I've corrected by filing it down flat and building up the levels with milliput. I'm still working on the wing arms and front wing, but you can see how they go together with the wing spar. They do take a bit of persuasion to align, but once assembled, work like a charm. The engine detail on underside haven't been neglected either. As you can see, the M3 Max has been really earning its keep. These parts are all in various stages of cleanup. Some are finished, some have just had the supports removed. The main mount is printed in ABS to accept the coupling which will attach to the stand. There's been a few design changes along the way and a few minor errors to correct, but that's why everything is getting printed and assembled in this test phase. 
progress here has been pretty good, as there's been little change to these parts since the Mark 1 version of Slave 1. Of course, the rotating cockpit has also had some attention. Lots of detail has been added, and magnets will hold it in the landing and take off positions. It goes together well, and the main bearing is a good tight fit in the center. Let's take another look at the main hull, now that all the interior parts are printed. After another round of cleaning up, the joins have been filled and sanded back. The entry door has a stair on the back face, and runs in the rails in the hull. This took quite a bit of filing to get it to slide well in both sides of the hull. The rest of the interior parts fit neatly into place, and really give the impression of a well-ordered functioning spaceship, perfect for a bounty hunter. There's plenty of stowage, and detail like the bunks in the tail, which will make this a great model to paint, and add even more detail to. On the other side of the hull, there's a carbon freeze chamber ready to go, and even a prisoner ready for delivery. Much of the stowage is mirrored from the other side. The cockpit locates in the side of the hull, ready to accept the other half of Slave 1. The main floors, stairs, seats and nose cabin are yet to be installed, but this will give you an idea of what to expect in the next episode. So I can get the two halves of the hull joined together, I need to add the lights and paint the interior. That's something I'm really looking forward to. Painting the interior will really bring it to life. There's some great detail in there, and I'm really keen to do it justice. My goal for the next video is to have the interior complete and the two halves of the hull finally glued together. Then it should just be a simple process to complete and attach the wings and underside detail. I do still have to address the elephant in the room though. If you can guess what that is, leave your answer in the comments. With everything complete, I'll then release the files for sale, so you can print your own Slave 1. I hope you're enjoying Project Slave 1. If you are, please share with your friends, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So you catch my next video when it goes live, click on the bell icon. To learn about some of the techniques I use, check out my how-to series to find out more about moulding, casting, CAD design and 3D printing. If you have any questions about Project Slave 1, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.